Comet Lovejoy, officially designated as C-2014 Q2, was recently hit with solar eruptions, producing disruption to the steady tail stream that has taken the form of a bubble of charged material easily visible in the tail here. The disruption was fairly recent as it appeared at first a few days ago, preceded by a bow in the central stream, preceded by far more homogeneity in the structure of the tail. Using the orbital diagram from NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab and looking down on the inner system from the north, Lovejoy is currently a little further from the sun than Earth is and about 1 AU from Earth, behind in our orbital trajectory as we go counterclockwise from this vantage point. Let's eyeball Lovejoy to be about 70 degrees behind, heliocentrically. Now, let's tilt 90 degrees to see from Earth's orbital plane you can see that Lovejoy is well north of the planetary paths. So, if we are going to identify the solar eruptions that caused the disturbance at the comet, we need to look at the northern hemisphere of the sun, above the equator a bit but not so high as to be near the polar region, and, from Earth's point of view, we'll need to look at the left side of the sun for eruptions heading in the comet's direction. It started in early February. Nothing major. A filament releases on the left side, north of the equator at mid-high latitude, right at the comet. And then, another. For days, we tracked filament after filament coming over the northeastern limb, often twisted up into a solar tornado, and eventually, they would release. Finally, days later, a different kind of eruption. A solar flare released extreme ultraviolet and X-ray radiation out in the comet's direction, an M2 class eruption. This event even caused a radio blackout at Earth and wasn't even pointed our direction. It released a good bit of material in a coronal mass ejection as well. These coronal mass ejections of the last two weeks have predominantly been at the comet. The huge clouds of plasma deliver interplanetary shock waves to solar system objects that can electrify and ion blast their targets. And being so close to the sun, there's more. Each planet connects to the sun via interplanetary magnetic fields. Technically, even satellites do, according to the official Enlil spiral. And so do comets. When eruptions come at Earth, we notice this connection surged and able to deliver dangerous radiation to our planet long before the shock waves of plasma arrive. So, it's possible that the comet experienced a radiation storm as well. Now whether that or a magnetic storm from the shock wave of solar wind particles was responsible for the disruption in the tail is a question that we may never be able to answer. But one thing is for sure, it has been a rough month for C-2014 Q2. Comet Lovejoy.